In today's video I will give you five important reasons why you should photograph in a local landscape. Even though your local backyard might not be the most sexy in the world and is not trending on Instagram, there are a lot of lessons to be learned here. However, this is not a how you should photograph your local landscapes video. This is a why you should photograph your local landscapes video. And the first reason is fairly obvious. It's physically so much easier and it's so much cheaper. And, you know, planet Earth is probably more happy about it too. But yeah, you don't have to deal with crossing a country or getting to the airport, standing in line, checking in, having to deal with getting on board the airline, putting all your luggage into it, flying to a destination, maybe having a layover, flying to another destination, being jet lagged for several days and yeah, it generally just it's just physically so, so much easier. You don't have to deal with all the traveling. I know uh, in the beginning when I started travel landscape photography, I was super excited to fly and travel and it wasn't such a big deal. But you know, when you are traveling like four months a year, it is becoming a little bit annoying having to, to travel all the time. So I really enjoy that I can just get up in the morning get out of bed, jump on the bicycle or take the bus and just go to the forest and then I'm there. Like, not a big hassle with it. The second reason is that you can train and hone your skills when you're back home. That was what I did for several years before I even went to Iceland to photograph for the first time. I started photographing back in 2011-2012 and I didn't go to Iceland before 2015, autumn 2015. I already had the training done. I basically just needed to go out into the field, go to Iceland and collect all the information. You know, I already knew how to bracket my photos to have all the information in the shadow and highlights. I knew how to use filters and how to long expose. I knew how to focus stack, how to photograph the auroras in Milky Way, how to time blend, how to light paint, how composition works. And I of course also already knew how to edit my photos beyond just simple Lightroom adjustments. I could go out into the field and make photos with the intention in mind to do a lot of photoshopping to them. As you can see with the photos I'm showing on the screen here, all these photos, I shot those before I went to Iceland. So going out, find maybe not the most interesting composition or maybe the most interesting subject, but at least you can train and have fun with it. Like you don't need to necessarily do landscape photography. As you can see, I've done steel wool photography, I've done portrait photography, uh, light painting and, and so forth. So there's really not really any excuse. Just go out and have fun with it. It's, it's really that simple. So a third reason is if you can overcome the feeling of your local landscape, feeling a little bit boring and redundant and if you can't find the compositions or subjects, if you can overcome that, then you would probably appreciate the photos you get from your local landscape way more. And there can be several different reasons for that. Personally, I really appreciate it because I, when I travel so much, I do have a little bit of uh, homesickness. So when I put photos on the wall from Denmark and from my local backyard, not from like outside of Copenhagen. I don't live near Copenhagen, so I'm not interested in that landscape, but from the middle part of Jutland where I live. I can relate to those photos. I've grown up in those uh, landscapes, so I really appreciate just looking at them because they make me feel home. They make me feel calm. They, they, yeah, they, they calms me. Even though I do have photos on the wall from uh, both the Faroe Islands and the US and Europe, other places in Europe and Britain, I enjoy those photos, but I enjoy them mainly because it's great memories for, from me and Sophie's uh, tours to these places. So the photos I choose to hang on my wall is something I personally can relate to. And beyond the relatability, personally I would say there's also some kind of satisfaction in actually going into a 
not world-class location and taking photos that might not be world-class but are really good quality photos. You don't need to go to Iceland to make the best possible photos. Uh, you can actually do it in your backyard. If you want to learn more about composition, be sure to get my ebook on that subject. I have both a light free version and the full version. I'll talk more about it in the end of the video. So besides being out scouting today, I'm also out playing around with my new 100 to 400 and my 2x extender right here. That's a 800 millimeter straight into the scene. And I've actually found this rather cool composition. It's basically just straight on with an old oak tree, which is like covered with moss. So whenever the sun comes out, it will backlight that moss. I don't think it's completely optimal right now. I would have preferred the sun, which is in that direction there, to be in that direction straight behind the tree. So I will have to come back here at like 11 in the morning. That would be more preferable. The one thing I'm mostly in doubt about is that there is actually a little tree right in front of it, throwing its branches into the scene. And I can't really isolate the main tree more. So I'm not sure if those branches from the small tree will be too much of a distraction. For now, I think it is, but well, it's all part of the scouting. Uh, you find something that might maybe uh, work might not uh, and then you come home and then you yeah, find out if it actually worked or not so the fourth reason why photographing locally is preferable is that you can go and scout and scout and scout and you can really get to know it very very intimately you can get to know exactly where this composition is you can go home you can uh, maybe decide that you should have been a little bit further left or further right and you can keep optimizing the composition that you had in mind and then you can always go back when the conditions are optimal no matter the time of year and that is just so important if i go to iceland i need to decide when to go and what conditions i'm hoping for, aiming for, and what conditions I definitely do not want. But when I'm back home in Denmark, I can just go out, wait it out, and go out uh, when the conditions are way better. And in that way, I can get more optimal photos from my backyard because I know it more intimately. And I can get unique photos, which for a lot of photographers is something they value very very highly so the fifth and final reason is that you are not part of an oversaturated market well chances are you're not part of an oversaturated market unless you live in iceland uh, me being from denmark i can go out and photograph aarhus and chances are people from aarhus would way rather buy a photo from either Risco, where I'm walking now, or downtown Aarhus, or some of the more iconic places. People living in Aarhus couldn't care less about some beautiful snow-capped mountain surrounded by flaming auroras in Iceland. They would much rather have some black and white selective color from yeah, Aarhus, because this is where they live, this is where they have their normal day and just like I like to put photos from my local backyard on the wall because I can relate to them. So people from Aarhus would most likely buy photos, fine art photos from Aarhus than they would buy fine art photos from Iceland. And by not being part of an oversaturated market there's almost no competition and you more or less decide how much you want to charge for your fine art prints. Since both Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve are on Tuesdays this year, I won't release any videos on those days. You know, it's like video shikle suicide. So it will just be Sunday releases over the Christmas. 
If you want to know more about composition, be sure to check out my ebook. I have a free light version you can get by signing up to my newsletter down in the description. And I of course also have the full version. I also want to say a huge thank you to all the super nice comments I got on my last Iceland video from the Highlands. I, it means a lot that you all enjoyed it so much. If you haven't watched it, I can highly recommend it. It is by a landslide, my favorite Iceland video I have ever made. Really, really epic. And I also hope you enjoyed these five tips and you go out and shoot your local landscape also. So thank you so much for watching. As always, I would highly appreciate both a like and a comment and Merry Christmas.